What's up, divas? And what's up, divos? It's your girl, April. So, you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. Which means it is time for some real talk where we could talk some shit, dish out some dirt, and just talk some shit. So, first of all, let me just say this. I want to thank everybody for giving me their opinions and thoughts and advice on my teeth, what I should do. And I totally forgot about veneers, um, which is a way cheaper um, um, alternative to getting implants. I was not aware that when you get implants, you have to go like six months without teeth. And I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm already pissed off about my teeth, the way they look now. So I would be damned if I had to walk around with no teeth for that long. So someone, um, someone a few, quite a few people suggested um, to look into veneers. And so I did that. So when I went to the dentist this morning, I went and I got my teeth done today. You know how I was complaining about the dentist. Well, I actually went there. I went back there. I was going to go to the dental school, but I would have had to go get my x-rays. And, you know, I just felt like if I already started here, I'm just going to continue because the prices at the dental school were really not that much different from the dentist that I'm going to. So I got... um five teeth filled today all five of them was right here in the front of my mouth so it was like really important and that was 925 not nine dollars 925 dollars okay also when i was there i was talking to the nurses or not the nurses but the staff I love the staff there. They are so sweet. The young ladies that work there, they're amazing. They just have like a really good mannerism. Plus, they just make you feel comfortable. And regardless of what your teeth look like, they still make you feel like you're still pretty. Um, so, I was talking to, I think her name is Crystal. And she works up at the front desk. And I was talking to her. And she, I was telling her about the veneers. Well, what she suggested, because of the gap in my tooth, veneers probably is not really a good option for me and that I should get crowns. So I, I always thought that crowns was like more or less for the back teeth. I never was really, you know, you know, schooled on the difference between what is what. Uh, but crowns actually go over the entire tooth from front to back which is a better alternative than getting veneers. So she um, she told me that she would tell the dentist that I wanted to talk to her about it, talk to him about it. So same dentist, I think he's the only one that runs the office. I'm not really sure. But today he was super sweet, really, really um, much sweeter um, from the, than the first time that I met him. And he's actually from New York City like myself, which just still doesn't give him the right to be rude. But I just thought that his mannerism wasn't up to par. But today he was really, really nice, super sweet, and he talked to me about the veneers, and he told me um, that for implants, because this is what I told him I originally wanted, for implants, it wasn't like an option for me to get. And he's the type of dentist that he doesn't want to pull your teeth out, he, he really tries to save them. So... In return, he told me that he would rather me get some crowns, which would be much better for my teeth in the front, and it will cover my two front teeth. However, for the crowns, because the space is so big, it's going to make my two front teeth look a little bit wider than what they already are, because they're already wide, but he would shape them right, he would make them look just perfect. So, um, for two front crowns, that's $1,700, which is not bad, because a lot of other places, it's way more expensive, plus um, kind of got like a discount per tooth also I they, I was given like a discount per tooth which was great um so um more or less they they normally just advise you if it's for like cosmetic to get four done so um I do want to get four done in the front so that you know you can't tell but to start off with um uh, being at a seventeen hundred dollars and a girl don't have dental insurance I'm going to get two done in the, the front two done first in the next couple of months so yes um so i'll just like put some money aside um but i have been looking into dental insurance which is dental delta dental um that one of my friends christy told me about and also my best friend rebecca also told me about as well um but um I want to see if there's something else out there too. So if anybody knows of anything else, then let me know. But so yeah, I'm going to get some crowns on my two front teeth to close the gap. Um, I'm just excited about that because I am like really so sick and tired of my damn teeth. But so I got five of my teeth filled. All of them was on the, there was like two on the surface that had cavities or three on the surface. And you can't even tell that I have fillings in the front of my teeth because it looks just like my teeth. Although I think when I go back in three weeks, I go back in three weeks to get um, some extractions 
um hopefully uh because i can feel where he did it i'm trying to give it time because maybe the surface will get a little bit less jagged but i feel a little bit but anyway there was much he was he was much nicer today the dentist was really sweet today and so i was really happy with the turnout today you know what i'm saying so yes um that dentist also is a lot cheaper than a lot of dentists out here. When I was speaking to other dentists' office and giving them the prices, they was like, just stick with him. We've heard good things. And plus, his prices are so good. You're not really going to find prices like that. So that was like a number one, you know, like thing for me too, the price. So with him, really good. The staff, they're amazing. And um, yeah, they're super amazing. So I will make sure, hopefully I don't forget, I will put their information below so in case any of you guys live in um, Arizona and Phoenix area or whatever I live in Avondale but you know this is in Goodyear you can check them out they do take um, insurances and you also get like military discounts and stuff like that I'm not really sure what insurances they take but they do take insurances um so if you want your teeth fixed looked at whatever you can give them a call but they have some good prices so I'm really happy with the turnout today, okay? But other than that, so that's why I'm going to make up one today, but some eyebrows and eyeliner because a girl was really, listen, my whole face was like dumb, numb, okay? Like it was so numb up to here. I was like, oh my God, I can't even, I was like, if I, my face does not dull down, I'm going to be talking all weird doing real talk but I'm gonna do it anyway but so yeah so that was today did my three mile walk today like I do every morning Saturday I didn't do it I'm be real with y'all into a Saturday because I was sick um tinky my grandson constantly be giving me his cold so I had such the worst cough that the back of my head was hurting something terrible so I didn't go Saturday but I have been going every day for like two weeks walking three miles. It was a mile and a half, but now for two weeks I have been walking three miles. So I have bumped it up. So yes, that's what I did um, this morning, like always. And then I went to my dentist appointment at 1030. Um, so yep, that was the portion of my day. And also, um, so when I go for my three mile walk, a lot of people like to wear the waist trainers um, and I love them. I have several different ones. Um, and one of them that I got, um, I'm not really sure what's up with it, but it's from, um, the corset place, this corset place online. Okay. So it's not this one in my hand, but it's, it's just like this one. It has the boning and stuff, but have you guys ever wore a waist trainer and it just be like digging right here it just be digging all in my back stuck the boning be stuck in my back and I have to constantly keep pulling it down now it's my size but it hurts by the time I'm done wearing it it hurts so bad so I can't even keep it on so I mean this one is much more comfortable this is another waist trainer this one is better to me um, because it has a zipper. Now, for one, it has a zipper. I got it from Amazon. Um, a website sent this to me like a couple of months ago. Let me tell you, it is not as stiff as that one, like the normal waist trainers that everybody be wearing. Um, but it, um, it holds me in as well, and it's more comfortable. It doesn't, I don't know what's up with it, but it doesn't dig me like the... Um, Okay, so it doesn't dig me like this one. This one be digging the shit out of my freaking skin. Like, serious? Oh, my God. The lady, um, and I was sent this from, I think it was Orchard Corsets or whatever. It only has two fastens, but I was sent this, and this is a size 42. And it fits. It fits good. It fits nice and tight. But it just digs the crap out of me right here. It never stays down. So the lady at the mall who sells these, she was like, it probably doesn't work because your torso, whatever, your butt is too big. My butt ain't that damn big, okay? I've seen girls with way bigger booties wearing these, and I've never heard them complain about the digs in their skin. It just keeps flipping up in the back, and um... It's just very uncomfortable. So anyway, this one right here, I love this one. This one is by Eco, 
Ikao, I think that's how you pronounce it. But this one is so comfortable. Like, they do have the ones with the latches, but I went for the one with the actual, um, zipper now first of all this one is not as long as in width wise so maybe that's the reason why it's not digging me in my back and lifting up opposed to this one right here so i don't know i might need a shorter one but this one right here is super inexpensive i will post the seller's info below but i've noticed with this one versus this one i just get better coverage like it flattens my stomach a little bit more it's not so um complicated to put on it's more comfortable for me i will wear this all day long when i say all day like i wear this one all day it looks good under my clothing i don't see any little hooks and stuff like that but it's just so much easier to put on it's way more comfortable this also makes me sweat just like that one does and i just really feel like this one is a much more better investment than what that one was for me so yes i think this was probably like 20 dollars 25 30 bucks on amazon if that but i will post the seller's information i've had this for two months and i have been wearing it ever since and so for the two month range this is actually a really good um body stretcher or waist trainer so the size that i have is a 2xl um i think yeah yeah this is a 2xl that i have and it works like it really really works especially when you want to look neat girl it works it definitely definitely works so i will post their info below for you guys of where you can get that in case you want a waist trainer um i think it's good to start off with because let me tell y'all when you get them and they're so uncomfortable and they're digging you and digging you what happens is you get so um frustrated with the, the garment itself the waist trainer that you just give up and don't want to put it back on and i have been like that in so many cases and uh, different occasions with these waist trainers that it's like you know what i can't i cannot do this i don't know how these bitches be wearing this shit and getting them little waist like this but fuck them bitches because i'm not about to have nothing digging in my goddamn skin and being uncomfortable all day and that's how i would feel this one piece of cake much more comfortable i could wear this shit all day and still look cute you know bitch like to look cute always all day so as for the hair you guys if y'all have not seen the video make sure y'all check the video out it's on my channel and it is by youmayhair.com i absolutely love this fucking wig it is not one that i made it's a it's an actual lace front um, of course, it's from a vendor from, I think, China. Yeah, they're in China. Um, I have worked with them before. They have other stores, um, and I have worked with them before. And this hair that they have sent me, this wig, they have sent me many other wigs, but they have different stores. This one right here, let me tell y'all. This motherfucking wig is bomb ass like okay i will wear this shit with no makeup and feel still fucking cute okay now let me tell y'all finally this stupid ass got to be glue gel is finally laid down okay on my head but here's the thing with me i don't know if it's because i sweat and my head gets hot but that shit don't last for me all day like the sides will start lifting like you see right here and it's like, okay, a bitch cannot. My other friend told me, my friend Shay, with Shay Love, said she had her shit on for three days and it didn't move. I wish that shit will not last um, 20 hours, 12 hours. Eight hours, it's not even lasting. Like, the shit starts to lift. So, I don't want to sleep in it, but I'm just saying I would like for it to last. So, especially if I wanted to, like, put it up in, like, a bun or something. I would love for it to last all freaking day, but it doesn't. And yes, um, okay, so I'm doing the baby hair thing. Not getting carried away with it, though, but, you know, just a little baby hair. Just a little bit. So other than that, my freaking teeth hurt right now. Um, I'm not really sure why. My tooth is hurting. Um, yes. So anyway, so that's enough of me rambling on. If you want to real talk about yourself, your situations, what the fuck is going on in your life, some shit you want to talk about, about people you do not like, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers, um, 
muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line of the email, Real Talk. And if you plan to change the names of the people in the story that you're telling me, please let me know that ahead of time. Like, in the very beginning, like, I have changed the fucking names. Because if you don't, I will sit up there and be thinking of some names to call you so that way I don't mess it up. But, yes, so other than that, let's get on to this real talk, y'all. Okay. Okay, so first of all, I want to congratulate one of my YouTube subscribers for writing two books. So she probably doesn't know, she's probably not aware that I know, but um, she, she didn't even know that I know anything about this, okay? But I want to um, let you guys know, for those of you who love to read, there's not a lot of people who like to read, um, a young lady by the name of Aaliyah Murphy has written two books, um, which is really astonishing because for one, she has been through a lot. She has been through a bad relationship and she has gotten rid of that toxic in her life and she's constantly watching my videos um especially my real talk but she does not know that i know about her books um and i just wanted to put it out there because i love to support anybody and especially if you sat your ass down to write a book bitch you all the way live okay Cause I don't even like to write letters, let alone fucking write out a bill, a check to pay a bill. But the books are called Wild Cherry and Wild Cherry Part 2 by Aaliyah Murphy. So Wild Cherry and Wild Cherry Part 2. And it's by Aaliyah Murphy and they're available on Amazon.com. So I just want to shout her out and congratulate her also on her accomplishments. Because that's a lot. Some people don't even like to read. Of like five minutes and I think because of the day and age technology has just kind of like s prohibited a lot of things in going on and what we do on a natural daily life I remember I used to read all the time and I would love to read and I don't read as much as I used to but I still do and I'm thankful that my children like to read so I know a lot of people are probably gonna laugh at me when I say this but I do take my kids to the library Yes, the library is still live, and I do believe in bringing my children to the library because my mom used to always bring me to the library or to the bookstore. I used to love when she would bring me to the bookstore, and I do both. I bring Mumsy and my grandson and my daughter, Nay. I take them to Barnes & Nobles um, because it's right next to Ulta, okay? Mm -hmm. And the Barnes & Nobles is really nice out here. The section for children is amazing, and they always offer free things like free crafts, free story time and things like that so and it ain't the story time that people be fucking making up on youtube not those type of story times but they read to your kids they ask them questions they do crafts with them so i like to take my kids to do stuff like that but i also like to take them to the library because it ain't nothing to borrow a free book you can borrow a book for free and in case you guys didn't know and aren't aware you can also borrow blu-ray dvds as well as regular dvds and also cds so the library does have a lot of things to offer and so I do take my kids to the library. Yes, we do have library cards here. Everybody in my house has a library card except for Tinky and the dogs. But we do have libraries out here, plenty of them, and I do like to take my kids to the library. So because she's written a book, I thought it was really amazing because people don't take the time out to even read, let alone write a book. So I just wanted to congratulate you, Aaliyah for your, your accomplishments in writing a book, writing two books. And I hope you guys check them out on Amazon. Okay? So now onto the nitty gritty, okay? So this one right here may be a little bit long, but we're gonna get through this, okay? Hi April, thanks for being authentic. Well, you know, I be wearing a fake hair, girl, so I ain't that authentic. It's so rare. I'm a new subscriber, and I'm loving your real talks. I think it's great that you're willing to share your personal journeys to help us. Thank you. My name is Alexis, and I turned 40 on yesterday. I am feeling down about my lack of progress in life. I have one son and a granddaughter that I would like to leave a home or money to in the case of my death. I found out a few months ago that I have spine cancer. 
I really just shed a few tears the day I know I was notified by the doctor and I kept it moving so basically she just cried a tiny bit and kept it moving after she found out she had spine cancer I lost my mom a year and eight months ago and I feel like she was the only person that truly understood me I miss her so much I used to say I wanted to go with her it has taken me some time to accept her passing, but I haven't really accepted it because sometimes it hurts so much. I have to trick my brain by saying my mom is on vacation. I was on government housing and it was time for my renewal when I heard the news about my mom. As a result, I was moaning I lost and didn't complete my recertification for government housing in time and lost my assistance. So I share an apartment lease with my sister and it's been a year that I have been assistance free from the government and it's been a blessing. However, a co-worker named Winter and I had a dispute and we both shared our opinions and I thought it was over. I just took from the dispute that I wouldn't fuck with her anymore. A week goes by and a co-worker that I'm cool with named T comes to meet me at work and says winter is in the break room talking about you and saying she's going to beat that nigga fat ass and going on and on i told t stop i don't want to hear anymore then i walked to winter who was sitting in a chair and said winter my name is, is alexis and if you have anything to say about me tell me i heard you was looking for my ass to beat and i turned around and said here it goes get it Come to find out, Winter made a complaint on me, and a few days later, I was called to the office. As a result, my job said, although we didn't fight, but I threatened her, and we, we both got fired. I can say that I'm too old for this foolery, but I just hate when people try you and then go to the boss like you threaten their safety. Like she did think about, like she, like she did think about her own safety beforehand. So I have been without a job since November 26, and I'm thinking it was dumb, but I'm not going to let a white woman call me a nigger. But I really think I maybe should have handled it differently, but I'm not the type to let someone else fight my battles, and going to a supervisor is a snitch move. So I'm just not comfortable snitching. How could I have handled this? Love, Alexis. Sorry it's so long. Did she say a white bitch called her nigger? And she didn't eat... She didn't even do anything. I don't know <coughs> if y'all remember this, but this is the same time. She said November 26th. This was two years ago, and it's on my Real Talk videos. Y'all got to go back about me losing my job. But when I got a job here in Arizona, I was working at, as an administrator assistant. And my daughter Tati was working also, but I had my own office, and Tati was on the floor working with everybody else. And the girl named Ashley, she got upset with me because I told on her and told my boss that she ran in your office and looked through your drawers to find out how much her check was along with everybody else's. So she was pissed that I told on her. Um, she was already mad. This was going, this was probably like a week prior, but I'm not really sure what, what, what happened, but that day, um, I got pissed off with one of the workers, um, my supervisor. So I just slammed my office door, went in my office. Ashley must have forgotten that my daughter Tati was in the cubicle, like, right next to her, kind of, and was like, oh, um, something, something, that nigga, that fuck that bitch. She ain't nothing but a nigga anyway. Some shit like that she said about me. So my daughter Tati was jumped out and was like, what the fuck did you just say? I'm about to whip your ass up in here. Ashley took off running, ran out the office. And then I was told about it by the co-workers. And then I went in the boss's office and was like, you better talk to her. Because if you don't, I'm going to take care of her. So basically, I got fired because I threatened her. But that bitch stood and kept her motherfucking job. And I was like, that's cool, because I'm going to come up there anyway, and I'm going to whip that ass. First of all, Alexis, you handle it better than most people would have handled it. Um, because, for one, she should have got fired. Yeah, but you shouldn't have gotten fired. You didn't even threaten her. All you did was go up to her, basically, and say, you was talking shit about me or whatever. Here's my ass. You said you wanted to beat it. Here's my ass. She called you racial slurs. You didn't threaten her. You didn't threaten her in any way. You handle it better than anybody else would have. So how you handle it is how you handle it. Because a bitch like me, like I said, and like my daughter said, I'm going to fuck you up. My daughter already told her, I'm going to fuck you up. And she took off running. 
okay? Me personally, that nigga shit don't fly with me. Especially, okay, I don't like being called nigga by a black person. But if some white bitch about to call me some nigga shit, it's about to be on and popping. I wish a motherfucker that was not black called me nigga, okay? I have been called a nigga before, all right? I have been called a nigga one time before, prior to that situation with that fucking bitch Ashley. And okay, she's a white girl, but she's... I don't really give a fuck what race you are. Bitch, don't call me no motherfucking nigga when you constantly using drugs. Bitch, you don't even got your kids living with you, okay? So, what? What the fuck did you just say? Ah, uh, nigga what? Nigga who? What? Yes, okay? Don't talk shit. Let me tell you something. Motherfuckers be so quick to call you a nigga. And then when you go and approach them and be like, what the fuck did you just say? They will run and tell on your motherfucking ass. That's the shit that I don't like. And I'm sorry. I know I got white subscribers and all kind of subscribers from all kind of race, ethnicities, and everything like that. But we as black people do not like to be called the end fucking word, okay? Y'all motherfuckers need to get that shit straight. Keep that fucking word out of y'all vocabulary. Because when a motherfucker calls us the N word and then we like, bitch, I'm gonna fuck you up. Are we ready to fight? Y'all bitches run to the police. Y'all bitches bitches run to the boss y'all bitches run to the teachers like don't don't go run tell that shit this is the shit that i'll be trying to get people to understand when you run off at the motherfucking mouse when you run off at the pussy bitch be ready be prepared for an ass motherfucking whipping don't go running this is the shit that i can't stand when you fucking run your mouth and you start some shit you start some shit, and then when a person confronts you, you got to go and run and tell and be a snitch. Bitch, handle your shit and be a woman about your shit. Keep your shit real and be real about your shit. Like, for real, if I tell some bitch, kiss my ass, I'm going to beat your motherfucking ass, and you come up to me and be like, did you say you going to beat my ass? Yeah, I did say I was going to beat your motherfucking ass. Now, I didn't say... I might could win, okay? I'm not saying that to her, but I'm as a person, I'm telling you guys, I never said I'm going to win, but if I said I'm going to beat your ass, yeah, bitch, I'm going to beat your ass. Now, I may not win, and I may win, but if you want to fight, we're going to have to fight. We're going to have to scrap it out. That's the consequences of running your motherfucking mouth. If you run your motherfucking mouth, be prepared to scrap. Grown woman or not, be prepared to scrap. Be prepared for whatever the fuck is going to come after you run your motherfucking mouth. Whether it be an ass whooping or confrontation, just be prepared because you done ran your motherfucking mouth. Now, you shouldn't have got fired. You should not. Did you say your name was Angel? Alexis. You shouldn't have got fired at all for talking to somebody and telling them, here's my ass. Because you know what? If a bitch that I worked with, I already know the deal. Call me a motherfucking nigga. You know what? I'm going to just be real with y'all. I'm not going to tell. I'm not going to tell on you. I'm not going to. I'm going to be real about my shit, and I'm going to approach you. And I'm going to be like, did you, um, I'm not even going to say such and such told me that you was like, oh, I'm going to beat that nigga ass. Or, I'm not going to tell you that such and such told me that you called me a nigga. I'm not going to tell you that such and such told me that you said you was going to beat my ass. I'm just going to come up to you and be like, so I heard. So I heard that you was calling me a nigga. And I heard that you wanted to beat my ass. Well, since I'm a nigga and you want to beat my ass, a bitch is right here. So what's up? Okay? At that moment in time, I'm not going to even be worried about employment. Because when you go to the people, to the people, and you be telling them how, oh, well, such and such called me a nigga, and such and such said she was going to beat my ass. Nine times out of ten, them bitches ain't going to do shit, but try to squash it. And then that bitch still going to be working at your place of employment. And then you're going to see her every motherfucking day, and you're going to want to strangle the bitch, okay? So, to avoid all of that, yeah, bitch, I might get fired by the end of the day, but how about this? If I get fired from stepping to you and telling you that, um, what's up? I'm definitely whipping your ass. I'm going to whip your ass so good because I got fired. I got fired because you ran your motherfucking mouth talking shit about me. That's the main goal. That's the main key of why my fucking ass got top fired. Because if I didn't get fired, then I wouldn't have to. Here's the thing. If you didn't say some smart shit about me, I wouldn't have had to come to you and confront you and get fired. So now that I got fired, bitch, I'm going to really whip your ass. And bitch, I might just whip your ass in the job place. After I get fired, okay? Just to prove a motherfucking point. 
bitch, I got fired. And if you didn't get fired, I'm definitely whipping your ass. Like, I'm going to come right up to your motherfucking cubicle, your desk, wherever the fuck you sit at, and I'm going to whip your motherfucking ass. Yes, security, you can carry me the fuck out. But first things first, I'm whipping her fucking ass. That's all. Security, you can escort me to my desk to get my shit. But best believe a bitch like me gonna take a beeline and whoop your ass. I don't give a fuck about the shit at my desk because I'm gonna have that shit already on me. Meeting my purse and my car keys. All that other shit, oh, pack it up and send it to me. But a bitch gonna whip your motherfucking ass today at the job place and not give a fuck. Okay? Trust and believe that was one incident. The second incident, the first incident I've ever had at a job place was not somebody calling me a nigga, but this was when I was in my 20s, um, early, early 20s, and I worked at Family Dollar in Schenectady, New York. And this was only probably like two months in the job. I made a mistake. This fucking fat white bitch named Sue, she said some dumb shit. As I was ringing the customers out, she came up to me, went off of me, and she was like, well, if you wasn't so slow and didn't know what you was doing, knew what you was doing, and the customer was black that I was ringing out. Sue was white. Now, you know black people, we stick together the majority of the time. She was like, the, I was like, whoa, whoa. And I was young, and I already had a bad temper, and I just started crying. And the lady was like, how dare she? She was an older lady. How dare she talk to you like that? And I started saying something to the customer about it, and then here comes Sue. She must have overheard me talking to the customer about what she just said about to me and started running off at her mouth. The next thing you know, I took the freaking bottle of alcohol, rubbing alcohol that the customer was buying because Sue started walking away to her little office, took that shit and hit her in the back of the fucking head with it. She wasn't that far. So my aim was perfect 100%. Hit that bitch right in the back of the motherfucking head. Oh my God. What's wrong? You are fired. I said, bitch, I don't give a fuck. Cussed her out and told her I will see her after work. I'm going to bust your fat ass today. Now, of course, she was older than me. She wasn't that much older. She was like in her 30s. But you ain't about to disrespect. I'm sorry, but it's not professional to disrespect anybody. Second of all, you don't go off on somebody in front of customers or other employees. Third of all, it ain't professional to disrespect April. Because April gets carried the fuck away, and then you'll see my true colors. Because at the workplace, at every job that I've had, I've always been Sarah. Now, in case y'all don't know who fucking Sarah is, I'm about to let y'all motherfuckers know right now who the fuck Sarah is. Sarah is, is, is another personality that I have. She is a nicer personality. Sarah is a whiter personality. She ain't white white like bougie white, but Sarah is Sarah. And she's like, hey guys, how are you today? Oh, hey, what's up? That's, that's the Sarah attitude. Oh, sure, I'll be more than happy to assist you. Yes, hi, how are you today? Hey, what's up? Hey, it's not even what's up. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you today? Oh, good to see you. How was your dinner? Oh, yes. I'm really friendly and I'm engaging and that's Sarah. That's me, Sarah, okay, when I'm at work. Or I'm Sarah sometimes in, in the public too when, you know what I'm saying, I need something done. It, Okay, but okay, and my husband is the one that has told me that I have been Sarah. He's the one who called me Sarah. So normally I'm like a Sarah, but and that's a professional April. Professional April is not April. Her name is Sarah. And maybe I should put that on my resume whenever I decide to get a job again outside of my home. I will put Sarah Furman on my fucking paperwork on my resume. So people will be like, oh, Sarah. Sarah, okay? But once you fuck me over at the workplace or not, because I have went into April mode at many of my jobs before. Well, I ain't had that many jobs, but my job that I had for like over nine years at Fidelis, I have went into April mode too. A lot of times I was Sarah, but when a bitch is pissed off and you have done some fuck shit, fuckery to me, April is here. What? Oh, you be like, you were just, that's when you see the real Gemini come out. You'd be like, you were real nice. God damn. Yes, it's like I get possessed and my head turns the fuck around in a 360. And then you see April and it's like, oh shit, this bitch is crazy. Yes, that's the real me. Okay. So in a professional setting, always try to be Sarah or Becky, like Becky with the good motherfucking hair. Try to be either one. And then when the bitches get out of line, 
then you have to go back to being your true self, okay? So, Alexis, you kind of handled it real well. Me, on the other hand, I'm going to say, shh, you handled it a whole lot better than a lot of us other black bitches would have done. Because let a white bitch call me a nigga, okay? I'm not even going to go up to you and ask you. Well, yeah, because your coworker might be lying. However, you can always... Uh, listen, let me tell you something. If you go up to a white girl that's called you a nigger and you be like, um, you ain't Sarah no more, first of all, okay? You were Sarah five minutes ago when she seen you, and then you done found out she done called you a nigger, and then you go up to her desk, you not Sarah no more. You be like, um, what's up? she be like, huh? Because you don't even use the word, what's up? What's up? Then you do the tongue smack. So, I've heard that, um... Tiffany told me that you called me a nigga. Did you just call me a nigga? That bitch be like, that white bitch should be like, no. Because who in a right mind that ain't black gonna tell a black woman, yeah, bitch, that's right, I did call you a nigga. Because if you say yes, even if you just say yes, I did. Bitch, you about to have your teeth fucking knocked the fuck out. So she wasn't gonna um she wasn't gonna be real about the shit and be like, yeah, bitch, I called you a nigga. So Alexis, you handle it real good. Because let a bitch call me a nigga, okay? Let a motherfucking bitch call me a nigga. I'm busting your motherfucking ass. Alright? I'ma step out of Sarah mode and I'ma step out of grandma mode. And bitch, you about to see the real April. I would advise you not to ever call me a nigga. There's some people that I don't even let call me bitch. Alright? That's one thing that I don't do. Don't disrespect me. So, you handle it real good. Unfortunately, about your living situation, sometimes, let me tell you, it's good to get off of government assistance. Because y'all already know that I've had food stamps in my life. Um, you know what I'm saying? And I was on welfare and stuff like that. Them motherfuckers be all up in your business, okay? They want to know what time of day and what day of the month you got your motherfucking period. Now, if you need it, then I'm all for it. You know what I'm saying? But just keep in mind, them bitches be all up in your motherfucking business. And if you can afford to do it on your own, then by all means, do it on your own. But if you need assistance, then get it. Everybody <coughs> needs help at a time in their life. Not, maybe not everybody, not the bitches that was born with a silver spoon in their mouth, but there are a lot of us who are not as, a, as fortunate that can go out and spend money just like that. Like, if I had it like that, a bitch would have crowns today, okay? I would have four new motherfucking teeth today. $3,400 does not come easy, but a bitch would have brand new motherfucking teeth today. Talking about what? Well, not today, but I would have got, you know, the mold and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, trust me. That's what assistance is there for. But at least you know that you had it while you could and you feel much better without it. Now, as for your mother, Alexis, I know that's a hard feeling to go through. And you know what I'm saying? You miss your mom. But just keep in mind that you may miss her, but do you really think that she wants you to take yourself down to be where she's at? No, you she wouldn't. And keep in mind also that you have somebody that looks up to you, meaning your son and your grandchild. So why take away what they have? You know what I'm saying? But listen, you handle it just as good as most people would. Because that, the way you handle it, some people wouldn't even done that much. They would have just went up to the bitch and started beating that ass. So yes. What would y'all do if somebody at the workplace called y'all a nigga? Like, let her know below. What would you do? I'm just saying. Okay, so, next. Hey, April, how are you? I came across your YouTube page, and I really enjoy your videos. It was in one of these videos that you had mentioned, just up and moving with your kids. I'm currently in the same mindset. I'm 31 years old, full-time manager at Popeye's, a full-time student studying to become a medical assistant, and a full-time mother of six beautiful children. Woo! <laughs> one boy and five girls. Woo! Because you got five girls. I'm currently with my children's father. However, 
our relationship isn't the best. I really feel like it's time to go to a place where nobody knows my name. Not to mention that I want so much more for my children. As I'm writing this, tears are coming to my eyes because April, I'm tired and I would really like to start living if that makes sense. I would like to know where you got your strength from. Where did you get your courage and how you adapted moving to a place with no family or friends? And I'm not sure if you have covered this topic before, but if so, an email will do. I just kind of need some reassurance from someone who has been there, done that without the judgment and negative opinions. Thank Thanks. Um, we're just going to call her Monica. So, Monica is 31 years old, a full-time manager at Popeye's, a full-time student, and a full-time mother of six children. God damn, you get full-time sleep, girl, because God fucking damn. God, God, G-O-T, not God. God. Um, damn, that's a lot, okay? Um, now, first of all, <laughs> let me just tell you this. I didn't just up and move. Um, the reason why I moved is because of my relationship with my ex-husband. Um, he was just drinking. We had a bad altercation. There was nothing in the town of Schenectady, New York. I was just tired of it. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to leave. I'm going to move. So this was in January of 2013. In July of 2013 is when I moved. So it was six months. Um, it was, wait, right? January. Um, February, March, April, May, June, July. Yeah, it was six months. Um, then that was a quick six months um, that that um, I decided to move. And let me tell you, it, it's not that easy, but... I saved and saved and saved and saved all my money for six months straight after that shit happened. Like in February, um, was it March? February, um, I kept saying I wanted to move. Out that. February is when I decided I wanted to move. March is when I said I'm going to move into, move to um, Arizona. So in May, I went to Arizona. I flew to Arizona in May to find somewhere to live. In July is when I came back for good. But it wasn't that easy. I had sold one of my cars and I also had um, saved every dime. So whenever I would get money, all the money that I would go in, um, that I would um, get would go into my savings account, which was frozen. I had to bank freeze my bank account. So the only thing that I could do was put money in it. I couldn't take money out. If I wanted to take the money out, I would have had to come to the bank and just do a whole bunch of stuff and it just really wasn't worth it. So, and in order for me to save, I saved. I would I would live literally off of like $20 to $40 a week. That was what, how I would survive. Plus I coupon, so I had a book of coupons, so that's also how I saved money on food and household things like that. You know, I saved money like that. Um, but it was it was very, let me tell you something. The most part that made me nervous and scared wasn't the part that I was moving somewhere that I didn't have family because let's keep in mind, I lived upstate New York. All of my family was in New York City, all right, which was like two hours away. My mom never came to visit me like that. So I didn't have family in the state, in the little town that I lived in as well, only my kids. So it wasn't really anything different. I didn't have no friends, but the girl that lived next door to me, and she wasn't like the best influence on me. She's still my friend, but we drank every single day. Captain Morgan, we was getting drunk every day. I was getting depressed from drinking. I wasn't like taking showers like regularly. So well, I took a shower, but I wasn't taking them twice a day like I normally do. But you know, one shower a day is cool too. I mean, it was some days that I missed a shower or two, you know what I'm saying? But who was I to impress? I didn't have no boyfriend. I was stopping. My, my husband was in jail. Um, I looked like shit. I didn't even care about how, my, how I looked um, like that as much anymore. The only time I would really would put myself together is to do like a YouTube video. So, um, it wasn't like I was really missing out on friends and family where I was at. So, the only part that scared me was the part that I, myself, all alone had to drive from New York to Arizona with me and five children and a dog, okay? Now, I, granted, my son, he was 20. I think he was like 20, 21 at the time. He could drive too, but I'm not about to let you drive my Tahoe. And I had something on top of the truck too, so that made it a little bit harder to drive, you know? And I just was scared of the long drive. It was like a three-day drive. And I had to drive across the country with my kids and they depended on me me alone i had to make sure that they ate i had to make sure that they slept comfortable every night which i did i had to drive i had to do this all on my own on roads that i never even knew existed didn't even know the condition of these roads let me tell you some of it some of the way was a little bit scary but 
I had it in my mindset that April, you cannot let a three day drive. Okay, so sorry about that. My memory card got full. So I couldn't let a three to four day driving experience across country scare me from moving forward in life because that was the only thing that was bothering me was driving that long of a distance i didn't have any family and i didn't know where i was at but here i had to keep in mind when i moved upstate new york i didn't know where anything was at too but over time i learned it and i got around same thing here i've been here for three and a half years i don't know where everything is at but that's what i got my phone for gps um google map will tell me everything and everywhere i need to get to um and it's kind of cool because though i moved here and i don't have any friends or i mean excuse me i didn't have any friends when i first moved here you know i have made friends i have my really good friend like she's like my best friend in the whole world rebecca and we have so much in common we both have five kids we both have a mini dots and dog which is weird we both had a nissan mini quest a minivan at the same time before i lived here she had one the same exact year where i had mine um we both had the same exact number on our house which is 11317 and then our street address and we both like to do like um, crafts go to the thrift store and we get together we drink we talk shit she has her husband there they have five kids together she has three boys two girls i have two boys two boys three girls so we have and her daughter is my daughter's best friend they're in class together so that's how we met and we have so much in common and i love her to pieces and um we spend so much time together which is great because you know it's always good to have at least one good friend so keep that in mind like you're not going to know everything about the place you're living you're not going to know all the places to go that's why you google it you look up places you find out what kind of stores they have and you may not find out everything but it's a learning experience and you can never let those type of things stop you or hinder you from moving forward in life like when my mom she was like ah oh, what you moving out there for you know talking shit my neighbor the one that i was always drinking with she was saying the same thing and them people kind of almost made me not leave you know what i'm saying i almost just was like fuck it i'm gonna just stay i actually was going to stay and i i was like nah april you did all of this just go if you don't like it you can come back you know what I'm saying? You can never knock something until you try it. Don't knock it until you have tried it. And that's on some real shit. Don't go putting something down until you have tried it. You know, a lot of people are scared. Some people don't want you to better yourself. Some people don't want you to move forward. And some people are just too scared to do what you want to do. So, of course, they knock it and they give it negative negativity. You have to do what's best for you. You know what I mean? I have heard a lot of slack. Why you want to move all the way to the other side of the country? Listen, that's what the fuck I want to do. You can't knock something until you try it. I think the only person that was really on my side for moving was my dad. And he's always on my side for a lot of things. Just like with me and my ex-husband. Um, he was like, he been said, if that's who you want to be with, and that's who you love, then you be with him. Fuck what everybody else thinks. And he's right. So if that's where you want to go, and this is what you want to do, fuck what everybody else thinks. Do you. All you need is enough money to move. You know what I'm saying? I paid somebody to move me because I wanted my shit. So my move was really fairly cheap. You know what I'm saying? It was really inexpensive. I think I paid like three Gs altogether. Altogether, like a little tiny, like 3200 altogether for my entire move. You know what I'm saying? It's ways to go about it. It's ways to do things. And sometimes it's in the cards, meaning some shit is meant for you to do. Some shit is meant for you. And it just seemed like before I moved here, like I was doubting people and I was scared that I wasn't going to have the money to do it. And I just kept saving. Shit just kept coming into play. Like every time I would watch like my favorite channel which is the id channel investigation discovery channel or housing channel like um uh, diy channel for uh, flip your houses and shit like that everything that i would see was always pertaining to arizona everything everything was pertaining to arizona i spoke to like seven different moving companies and they was like 10 g's 8 g's and then there's one company american line american lines american moving lines they called me up we quote you for 964 to, to come and get it and then after the move it's probably gonna be like three thousand so it was like all in my favor to move i think and when i say favor like some people don't have a belief of god and that's fine but i just think like it was in my cards and it was in my faith for me to be here um and like what my daughter tati says 
my other friend, um, well, she's not my friend, um, but she's somewhat like my friend. She's my daughter's friend's mom. She has a lot in common with me, too. Me and her daughter, she and I, her daughter and my daughter, have the exact same birthday in year. We have the exact same car. Um, it's just weird, but you meet these, a lot of people that I've met, we have so much in common. So maybe this is my purpose to be here, and I'm happy, and I feel like this. At first, when I first moved here, I was really depressed. Not really depressed, but I missed my oldest son. You know, he was here for a month, and then he went back to New York. And I missed him, and I missed my grandson. And, you know, I just missed a lot of things. And I just felt kind of depressed, and I was ready to go back. And I kept saying, you know what? And, like, within five years, I'm moving back to Schenectady, New York. I'm moving back. I don't want to be here. Or, like, within a few years, two, three years, I'm moving back. Well, you couldn't drag me from here. So, what I'm trying to basically get to you, Monica, is don't let people knock down what you want to do in life. It doesn't matter what the fuck it is. Do it. Because you only live one fucking time. And you don't want to be the type of person where you was like, oh, shoulda, woulda, and coulda. But you didn't. You know what I'm saying? You want to let your life pass you by. 31 years old, some people might be like, damn, that's a little bit too old to be going back to school and doing this and this and that. Do it because that's what the fuck you want to do. Do it because you have children and you're trying to do something to better their lives. That's the main reason why I came here. If it was just me by myself, then I would have went back to New York City. You know what I'm saying? But because I wanted my kids to have a better life, this is what I did for them. And I was like, fuck everybody else and what everybody else thinks. They don't want to do them. They don't want me to do me. I'm going to do me and I'm going to say fuck them. And if you don't want to speak to me no more, you don't want to come see me, then you know what? It's not meant to be. Let me tell you something. This is true. True shit. Last night I'm sitting here on my computer and I'm doing my work. You know, I'm working. I'm, I'm editing a video. This is my job, basically. I look at my phone rings. It's 945. In New York, it's 1145. Angel shows up, the girl from next door. I was, my whole face was like, what the fuck she want? Because the last time she called me, which was like seven months ago, the bitch was drunk. Every time you call me, you drunk. When you FaceTime me, you drunk. So sure enough, when I answered the phone last night, the bitch was drunk. People don't change. Some people don't never change. And I had to let her know, listen, she asked me why I got an attitude because I'm in the middle of working. I ain't trying to shun you and not want to be friends with you, but... I can't fuck with you if you're going to stay the same person. you stagnating yourself. You're not about to stagnate me in some fucking drunken conversation when I could just sit here and do what the fuck I need to be doing. And on top of that, bitch, you drunk. I don't drink every day anymore. You know what I'm saying? I stopped drinking. I was drinking every day. You guys know that. I always had a drink on Real Talk. I was drinking every single day. And it not only... Um, put weight on me it put it just made me feel like I was an alcoholic though I wasn't getting drunk I wasn't drinking to get drunk because I don't get drunk I don't like to get drunk so I didn't do that but I would be drinking like at 10 30 11 o'clock in the morning drinking uh -uh, vodka and orange juice like that shit ain't cool so I really want to I don't really want to fuck with you like that if you're gonna call me up drunk that's kind of disrespectful to me but if you're not gonna change then I'm gonna change for you and I'm gonna just be like you know what I see you around when I see you. I'm not going to allow myself to carry on with friends that don't fucking basically benefit me. And when I say benefit me, meaning not, not like I can get something out of you, but we got to better each other. So if you got people around you like that, Monica, that's throwing you negative vibes, them is the type of people you don't want in your life know how. You know what I'm saying? I cut off quite a few friends just because... I ain't trying to fuck with people that give me negative vibes. I cut off a couple of friends that live out here in Arizona. Because you know what? You don't want me to come to your house all the time, but you don't want to come over here? Bitch, please. Go ahead with that shit. I don't want to sit at your house and be bored and drink wine with you all the time. That's not what the fuck I'm here for. So with that case, with that being said, you got to let the negative shit go. And you got to do what's best for you and your kids on the real. That's what I do all day, every day. And I got a lot of people that don't like me for what I do. And you know what? Hey. It is what it is. Okay? Okay, so, next. All right. Hey, April, you've had, you've had a true fan in me for over five years now. You are like a big sister in my head. Because of, you, of your no-nonsense approach and confident attitude, I watch you at work on my break to break up the monotony of these country-ass people I work with. I am seeking your sisterly advice in a relationship situation. P.S. I changed the names. I, Lisa, have been married for over seven years to Daryl, a very great guy. He is a great provider, dad, spiritual, and supportive mate. When I was dealing with cheating assholes, he was the kind of man I prayed for. 
Unfortunately, since we had kids and slowed our drinking down due to our careers, we have lost it on a sexual fun level. We don't have fun and the place we live has a little of nothing to do. We have to travel a few hours to get to anywhere fun. I am from New York and he is from Georgia and our big lack of common interest has exposed itself to LA. Wasn't the case when we were in that party life. Do you have any suggestions before I mess up a good thing? P.S. We are in our early 30s. Thanks a million, Lisa. So basically, they have been married for over seven years. They stopped drinking. They drink. They cut down. Drinking has cut down. Drinking because of their careers, and they they kind of lost their sexual. Let me tell y'all something. Sometimes in life, we have to grow up. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, we have to grow up. We got to stop doing the shit that we do. Just like with me, I just said I had to stop drinking because listen, look, it was causing me to. I gained a lot of weight. From drinking for the past few months that I've been drinking a lot I gained a lot of weight and that's not cool you know what I'm saying um and I got older my life is not the same as it used to be you know what I'm saying I used to have a good time party drink all of that shit go out and shit like that when I was with my husband we would smoke weed every night you know what I'm saying and have a blast and have like the best sex ever however of course, I don't have him right now here with me, unfortunately. So, you know, my sex life is like this. Zero. Okay? But that's okay. Because sex is not everything. And if I really feel freaky, well, I got a glass dildo. And I got two fucking hands. I know that's not your motherfucking business, but I'm just saying. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? Like, so, some things in my life are, have changed. But maybe for the best because we got to grow up. However... Just because your life is dull and boring, um, sweetheart, Lisa, don't mean that your sex life and the relationship that you share with your husband has to be. So what? You may have to go and do things a little bit further away from home. But have you guys ever thought about, like, just doing things, like, for yourselves? It doesn't have to necessarily take money or too much money. It doesn't necessarily mean that you guys have to go somewhere outside of the home you guys have may have kids i'm not really sure if you guys have kids i can't oh yeah you said he's a great dad and stuff but your sex life is boring hold up let me see i'm trying to see what drawer this is in okay here we go now yeah you remember that asshole that i was dating well okay now i told you to spice it up now, I was really trying to say this in ways that y'all would motherfucker understand, but my sex life with him was so motherfucking whack, okay? I'm sorry, but two minutes with a little dick don't work for nobody. Little ass dick swore he was doing some work. You know, a bitch got tired of fucking faking the funk, okay? Never had a bitch come, never made me come, ever, in that time that we was together. But, you know what? It is what it is. So, to spice it up and, th you know what I'm saying, to make it fun, I bought this. This is Cosmos Truth or Dare, our naughtiest sex game ever. And it's really actually fun. And it kind of brought somewhat of a spice into the relationship. However, I couldn't really stand him anymore, okay? So, it don't matter how many motherfucking card games we playing up in this bitch. If I really don't care for you anymore and I'm lost interest in you, then this is not going to work. But, it actually is a lot of fun to play these and it's either truth or dare truth or dare you either can ask the question or do the dare i'm just going to give you a scenario would you ever want to get it on in a public bathroom if so where that's the truth okay you have to answer it dare if you don't want to do you have to say which one you have to do want to do first before they flip over the card though dare is create a new position in your head now show me how it works while we are both fully clothed. Okay, so let me tell you something, Lisa. This shit ends up being funny. I like to see a motherfucker ridicule himself sometimes for me just to make me happy. Not saying that you want to see your husband ridicule himself. But this was $9.95 at um, Spencer's. But you can go on Cosmopolitan.com and get it. But $9.95 in the U.S., $11.95 in the States. But you can find these, like, at bookstores and things like this. Cosmo Books. Just Google Cosmo Books. There are, like, a million cards. Well, I'm exaggerating. But there are a bunch of fucking cards in here. I don't really remember how many um, cards are in here. But it's a huge stack of cards, okay? 
for endless hours of fun. Now, I always suggest if your sex life is boring and it's getting dull, this shit will work. Let me tell you, you're not going to be able to play the whole card game with him that night because y'all going to get frisky and freaky and kinky and want to get it on. So I would definitely try these. $9.95, you can make them as well. Um, you can make up them. Me and my husband, we actually did this game before. My husband, husband, like the one that I'm divorced from, well, we call each other husband and wife still. So we made our own game, but it was much fun with him. It was so much fun to play those games with my husband. With this boring fat fuck that I was dating, he was just, I just like to see him ridicule himself because he's such a fucking asshole. And no matter how much fun this was, he was just, I just couldn't stand him. But you don't feel that way about your husband. So what I would suggest to bring the spice back up in it, have some fun. Wait till the kids go to bed. Close the door. Get some drinks. Like, not get drunk, but just get a nice bottle of wine or champagne. Candlelight. Get you a couple of things like you might need for the game. Some blindfolds and things like that. And play the game. Shuffle the cards and have a good time. Get on the bed and play the game. You know what I'm saying? Be fully clothed. Like, put your pajamas on. So that way, with the card entails, you have, you're ready. But... This is really cool for couples that really don't know how to break up the monotony, the silence, or whatever that's going on in your life, the non-freaky shit. This is always a fun thing. There's different type of games like this, but me personally, I would definitely go to like one of these sex stores, you know, the adult stores, that's what they're called, the adult stores. Get yourself something like this. This, first of all, for those people who ain't that freaky and are, don't want to admit to their freaky side, okay, or just a little bit scared, these are not so freaky. Okay, a bitch like me need more than this. But that's why, you know, you have that one mate in your life that's the perfect match. And that's my ex-husband, soon to be husband again, okay? Um, yes, I said it, bitches, yes. Okay? But... Don't give up, Lisa, because you guys have a career, you guys have a family, you guys probably go to bed early, you guys don't do the same thing. Like I said, we got to grow up sometimes in life. Sometimes we just got to grow up in life, and it ain't the same big party. But you know what? You got to take time for yourselves. You don't want to get old before your age. You want to enjoy your life, so don't get old before your age. But try some fun things out with you and your husband. Surprise him with this. You ain't got to go tell him. Surprise him with this. It's called Cosmos, Truth or Dare, our naughtiest sex game ever. And it's really a lot of fun. And it breaks up a lot of the built up, like, you know, just built up inside, inner inside. And you never know, this can lead to so many different things. Meaning maybe you guys will go out. You guys should take time out. Don't do the movies. Movies are cool. Some people like to go to the movies, but movies can be pretty boring. But because you're older, you don't probably want to go to the club where you got those young adults and things like that. You know, the, the t people that are in their 20s who don't know how to fucking act in public. Some of them, not all. But you don't want to go to a club like that. I would say, you know what? Plan a night for your husband, you and he. A nice dinner out in a nice jazz club or a, a nice poetry club. Those are always so mature and it always brings like the sensual side out in a relationship to where at the end of the night, y'all ready to fuck, okay? Yes, I said it like that, bitches. Y'all is ready to fuck. But also, when you get home, you got this. So no, don't give up. Don't go back to the cheating. Sometimes we miss those bad guy, um, those roughnecks, you know what I'm saying? And that's what the bedroom is for. It's foreplay, baby. You let them know, spank it. Spank it, rough it up, call me a bitch, whatever. You know, some of us are into that. Did I say us? Um, well, we're not talking about my sex life, but sometimes we do miss those rough necks and those men who are just rough around the edges. And then when we get a guy that's so good and he don't act like that, sometimes it can get a little bit boring. So you got to tell him what you like and what you want. Just make sure that shit stay in the bedroom. Nigga, I didn't stay. Start acting like that in real life or in, in reality world when we ain't getting it on. But... Don't give up. Sometimes that one person may need the initiative from you to get the flame going. He might want, he might feel the same way and he might want to do 
and have fun and do all kind of things with you. Don't have to be sexual, but all kind of fun things. But he don't know how you will feel. He don't know how to approach you. So maybe you should start off slow and tender with him. <laughs> okay? Set a nice dinner out or set a nice dinner at a place that you guys can go to. It don't got to be expensive, girl. Have fun. Think about when you was guys was in your early 20s. Go to the club like a nice jazz or a poetry club. And then have this right in the bedroom waiting for a nigga. So when he come home, mm, we about to have fun. These are so much fun. I'm telling y'all. They are a lot of fun. You'll get some good laughs. I told y'all I like it when a, when a, when a motherfucker is ridiculing they self for me. Okay, yes. You wanna you wanna you wanna ridicule yourself for me? Okay, we can do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is gonna be the last one because I have talked y'all motherfuckers' ears off for the longest. Okay, hello Miss April. I love your channel and have watched you for a good long while now and live for your videos. You have great content and you absolutely and you're an absolute breath of fresh air to watch. Why thank you. I'm writing in the hopes that you can take on my email as a real talk. I don't believe you've had a real talk like this and would love to have your advice on this matter by email or video. My name is Reese and I'm a very small and I am a small, very small YouTuber. Reese Reads. That makes comic book review videos. During the very short time that I have been on YouTube, I I amassed short uh, I have amassed subscribers at a very fast rate at high numbers. It took about two and a half months for me to reach 400 plus subscribers and for the comic community that is really great. Okay. The reason I even mention this information is because I believe that me gaining such popularity so quickly put me on a hit list of some sorts. Since being up here I found that at, at first everyone was so welcoming and kind and would be so supportive of, of my videos. And now those very same people are sending me death threats, talking badly about my children, my finances, my sexuality, my race, and my body. To give you backstory, I first collabed with a guy named JT. We became, we became friends very quickly and after first emailing back and forth for a few days and went from the emailing to exchanging numbers. From that point, he would call me seven days a week for hours on end and we would chat for hours and have tons of conversations about life, comics, and random stuff. Soon our friendship grew to the point where we were doing almost every video together. Until one day I decided to do a collaboration live show with another YouTuber. During the time I was present on the other YouTuber show, JT called in and wanted me to hang up on the show to talk with him until he clocked in at work. I obliged him for as long as I could permit without being completely absent from the other YouTubers live show. Right at the moment that JT was clocking in my computer that died, my computer died and our phone call became disconnected. I quickly texted him to let him know but before I could send this fool started telling me I made him feel like shit hanging up on him to do a live show with this other YouTuber and how that was a low blow. From there, we tried to rekindle our friendship and make amends, but on our last conversation, he admitted to having feelings for me, which I had a feeling about the whole time, but did not re um, reciprocate. After the, converse, uh, after the confession, the very next day, JT started acting very strange and distanced, and then dropped a bomb on me, accusing me on coming onto him and making him uncomfortable. As soon as I read the bullshit he sent me, making me out to be the creep, I decided to properly block him and cut all ties and communications. I, of course, let him know that I felt was very fake and I don't have time for it. Well, before the before I blocked him from an email, I barely used, I, re, I received a message. Oh, before I got to block him from another email address I barely used, I received a message from him telling me that he will keep my secret safe which referenced the shit talking we had both did about fellow YouTubers. Of course, he was trying to make it seem as though it was only me talking shit when it actually was him and I was just key, key with him or maybe co-signing. Well, let's fast forward a few months later. I got an email from JT calling me every name in the book, accusing me of disliking his videos, calling my videos shitty, and so on and so on. This soon went to a back and forth where he decided to attack my children by calling them niggas and retards, calling me all kinds of ugly fat bitches, dirt, dirty bitches, this and that, making up lies about my financial business, something I never went over with him about. He tried to say I can't pay my bills, that I don't take care of my children, I need to die and get my children up, how I have three baby daddies, I don't, but so what, right? Now how no one wants me and that he is going to um, tell, he's going on, wait, what? 
that he is going to out me as a lesbian and much more vile things. I decided from that point to expose him by posting all his emails to Twitter, Instagram, and air my grievances to other YouTubers in private Google Hangout sessions. I thought that these people were being supportive at first, but I was dead wrong. Since dealing with this drama, I have had other fights with YouTubers, and people fall and people fall out with me over this drama. And I now have had several YouTubers make videos trying to destroy me, talking about my kids, calling me fat, um, calling me a fat dyke calling me whore and bitches and animals. It seems that the drama is not stopping anytime soon. And I was hoping maybe I could have hear my story. I know this is a long email and it isn't even uh, though half of it. This isn't even half of it. If you need a secondary email from me to get clarification, I have no issues with that. God bless. Ooh. Well. You know. She does tongue smack. Okay. So. First of all, let's just talk about, let's just talk about this. Okay, I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. Hold on, guys. Okay, so, let's just talk about this, all right? One thing to do when you are a YouTuber is, Let's not try to make too many friends with other YouTubers. Unfortunately, I have to say this because I have had my experience with that department and the best thing to do is just to keep to yourself. Now, yes, making friends with other YouTubers and making nice and playing nice in school and being nicey-nicey is always a plus. However, we don't want to make friends with every fucking body, okay? Not only that, but if you have a grievance and you got a problem with that one person... JT, what you need to do is keep it within him. Not go on to other social media platforms and start talking shit about the person. Because for one, that's not the womanly thing to do. And when I say the womanly thing, meaning be real about your shit. Don't go talking to other people about this one person. That's like talking about somebody behind their back. And then you get mad when they start talking shit about you or they start telling that person. You can't get mad because you the one that started the shit. You started the conversation about talking shit about them. Let me tell you something. Here's my thing. I don't really give a fuck what anybody on YouTube think and feel about me. No way, shape, or form. If you don't motherfucking like me, oh well, too motherfucking bad. Because I don't give two fucks if you don't like me. For two, if we was friends, um, if we were friends and we became friends from YouTube and then you start acting shitty with me, bitch, I'm not gonna fuck with you no more. But I'm not going to go on other social media platforms and be talking about you, okay? I'm not going to do that. Bitch, we not friends no more. Bitch, we not motherfucking friends no more. If you have the audacity to talk about me and talk about my kids, then we got a problem. For one, keep that shit on the you and I thing, meaning just talk about me. Don't talk about my motherfucking kids, okay? Because that's some real chump shit. However... If they talking about your kids or whatever, just put them in their place. Sometimes, you know what, it's so sad that grown-ups, grown-ass motherfucking people could talk about other people's kids. I have had that myself, sweetheart, okay? Several times with people talking about Mumsy. These are the people that have no lives, low life, miserable with their own life. If you could talk about somebody's kids and you are a grown-ass motherfucker, then you need to be reevaluated because it's a problem with your punk ass. There's no reason for you to be talking about nobody's fucking kids. However, here's the thing. I see many people talking shit on my videos. I see many dislikes on my videos. I'm to the point in my life now where, bitch, I don't give a fuck. You still watch the motherfucking video. Whether you disliked the shit or not, you still motherfucking watched it. Which means, thank you, bitch, for watching it. Because I got my coins just for you watching the motherfucking video. So you could dislike the shit all motherfucking day. I don't care, okay? And I will tongue smack and fling my motherfucking wig, weave, whatever the fuck it is. Because I don't care. Now, when the more subscribers you get, the more fucking weirdos comes out. Okay? And I say that nicely. But the more views you get on it. Let me tell y'all something. I have this one video. It was a um, before and after makeup video. It has over 600,000 views. It's a year old. Okay? I got all kind of motherfucking weirdos coming out of the wig work on that video. Getting mad because I was chewing a gummy worm. Getting mad because um, 
I didn't change my eyelashes, just getting mad, saying all kind of mean, cruel things. The more views, the more weirdos. That's just what you have to get the fuck used to. You have to have a tough skin to be on YouTube. And I have dealt with enough fucking weirdos in my lifetime. Motherfucking weirdos to the point where it's like, you know what I do? I just block them. I'm about to block this motherfucking girl from emailing me because she's starting to get really weird. I'm about to block her motherfucking ass. I've been emailing her the fuck back. But it's starting to get a little bit motherfucking weird. And before I flip the fucks out, I'm going to just have to block this bitch. But me personally, I wouldn't have been on no other social media talking about the motherfucker. Because these people that you on social media with, what make you think that they give two fucks about you and your relationship with them? People love to go ahead and tell the other person, yeah, this bitch was talking about you. People love to stir up motherfucking drama. All day, every fucking day. It don't matter how many motherfucking subscribers you got. People love to stir up drama. So, you were in the wrong for going to Google Hangout talking about the person, okay? Because just because it's Google motherfucking Hangout, bitch, you get exposed to. Don't talk about motherfuckers if you don't want no backlash. Second of all, block the motherfuckers. Stop having a soft heart and do your motherfucking videos. Stop collaborating with people so much. That's the one thing that I don't do. I have collaborated with... Um, one time, I think, and I don't collaborate no more, okay? I collaborated one time with a person, but, and you know what? I, maybe twice. I, two, I've done more, okay, I, I think I did two or three collaborations, but when I see the same person doing multiple collaborations with other YouTubers and then you want to come back, yo, you want to collaborate with me again? I just don't, I just, I just ignore the video. I ignore the fucking notification. I don't collaborate with a lot of people at all. I've done like two or three collaborations because I don't have time to be your friend and to befriend you and then for you to stab me in my motherfucking back. That's one thing I'm not going to allow you to do, okay? If you start fucking leaving negative shit on my videos, bitch, I'm going to motherfucking block your ass, okay? I'm going to block you because I'm not going to allow you to stress me the fuck out and irritate me. I hate being motherfucking irritated and I'm not going to allow one motherfucking person to do that. We're not going to do videos together every motherfucking day or all the time. That's not what the fuck I'm here for. YouTube is a place to have fun and enjoy yourself. And when people start fucking irritating you and harassing you, then it's a different story. You are here to do your comic book relief, um, comic book video reviews. Then do that shit. But stop befriending every motherfucking body. Because not everybody is your friend on YouTube. These bitches you think is your friend will befriend you just to fucking cut your motherfucking throat. Okay? They will befriend you to unfriend you. Okay? Just like that. And I'm just saying... There's a whole lot of motherfuckers out here that I don't like. There's a lot of motherfuckers on YouTube that I don't like. But I don't fucking write no dumb shit on their video. Bitch, I just don't motherfucking watch you. And if you don't like me, bitch, just don't motherfucking watch me too. Don't dislike my motherfucking video. Bitch, just don't motherfucking watch me. I don't even give a fuck if you dislike the video. You know what I'm saying? I know who be fucking disliking my video. This shit be up for 10 seconds and it gets a dislike. Bitch, I know who the fuck it is. I'm not, and you know what? You know what I do? I don't go and dislike their video. I don't do that shit because it's petty and I don't have time for it and I'll just rise above it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to rise above the shit and be the bigger person because I know I'm not dry and motherfucking boring. Okay? That's one thing I do know of that I'm not dry and my videos ain't motherfucking dry and boring. So, bitch, if you want to dislike my shit because I know who the fuck it is, then go ahead, bitch. I don't give a fuck. I'm not buying views and I'm not buying subscribers. So, right. But, you started it by going on social media, and now you have all the backlash. The only thing that I can fucking tell you to do is block the motherfuckers. Once you block them, you can report them to YouTube. But if they're making videos about you, then flag their video. Um, uh, I've had people make videos about me that didn't like me. Bitch made a video about me. She didn't even like me. I never did nothing to her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I did when I found out about the video? I went on there and I was like, thank you. Thank you for talking about me. Just that simple. Thank you for talking about me. So, it, good exposure and bad exposure, it's all the same. It's exposure. People that make videos about other people saying that they don't like them and doing dumb shits like that, that's petty. You know, like... Like the, um, what is it, um, the Bells Plus One. I've seen so many videos about exposing her, exposing her, exposing her because people don't like her. Listen, 
to each his own. Why take so much time out of your daily life to write and record a video about somebody you don't like? Okay, I'm not going to go in here and be like, oh, uh, uh, I don't know her name from the Bells Plus one because I don't watch her, but because it's not my type of shit. But I'm not going to make a video video about me not liking her. Like, the whole video is dedicated to her. Like, there's so many v videos out there for so many different people about how they don't like her. I think it's petty and it's just bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So, if these people are making videos about you, then hey. What it does, though, is it helps you because the person is going to go and look up your channel and say, Oh, well, they might see something they like and subscribe. Either way, it's all petty. Um, me personally, you know I'm going to keep it real with you, but I think you was being petty too by going to Google Hangout or any social media and talking about this person and then getting upset that they went and told. Bitch, don't get mad. I just said that in the last thing. If you could talk shit about a person, don't get mad when that person confronts your motherfucking ass. Don't get motherfucking pissed. Just realize, bitch, you started the shit. And I'm a motherfucking finish it. Bottom line. And stop worrying about it. Have a tough skin. It's YouTube, bitch. What fuck you worried about if anybody make a video for you? Them bitches is not paying your bills. So what the fuck you care? For real. At the end of the day, it's deuces to them bitches. Straight up. Okay? Straight up, no filter. So on that note, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. Feels like I was all over the place with this shit. And I know this shit is long as a motherfucker. So I'm going to end this shit right now because I got to go. I got to go downstairs, and I'm about to get me something to eat. My teeth is still hurting. I'm not really sure why, but I'm about to take me some aspirin and call it a night. And I love you guys. Stay diva and divalicious. And make sure you rate and comment and subscribe and share this video. And I will see you guys soon.